Hamdaga assalamu alaikum. Bugun bir webinarımız var. Malayzede yitek sporcu ve kan üniversitelerden bir tanesi, Hout University bolada. Bu üniversite üniversitede Malayzede University of Achievers de batışada. Hout bugün ki webinar mekmallarımız var. Doktor Lin Yukit ve Miss Naini Rosni Brian. Şunun şun bulan bir gelik de Mr Faris ve Mr Ben. Hop bugün sizlerge kanaka soruyla bosa kana iminde Malayzya'da okş boyu için deme soruyla bosa bir malay yazı botu ile boladı. Bize hama soruyla git doluk cevap verişi hareket kalamıza. Ve webinarımızın da başlayışı boladı. So let's start our webinar because I think a lot of the students from Pakistan are really interested in knowing a lot of information about the Malaysian University which is called University of Achievers. It's also interesting for me to know why it's the University of Achievers. Okay, and thank you, Mr. Ibrahim. Assalamualaikum and very good afternoon. So welcome again to our. I think this is our sixth session of study in Malaysia webinar week, Uzbekistan. So today we are glad to have representative from Help University, one of the top private university here in Malaysia, and today we have Mr. Ben. Uh, Ms. Saini and also uh, Dr. Lim eh, as the uh, head of uh, American uh, American uh, degree program. Okay, head of the department, Department of American and uh, Canadian Education. And also uh, Ms. Naini, we have a senior manager for Department of American and Canadian Education. So uh, welcome everyone uh, to this session. Okay. So um, to start our session today, let me give um, a little bit introduction about uh, study in Malaysia in general. Okay, why students uh, should consider Malaysia as your next uh, study destination. And also I will proceed with uh, some uh, nice video about the uh, study in Malaysia. So I will share the screen here. Okay. Okay, we have um, several reasons why a uh, student have to consider Malaysia as your next uh, study destination. So uh, the first one is that uh, we do have uh, world-class uh, quality education. Okay, for example, uh, in Malaysia, we do have uh, a lot of uh, public and also government university. Uh, we do have uh, some university in the top world ranking. For example, we do have about eight universities in the world uh, top uh, 200. And then besides that, uh, some of our university, uh, you know, done uh, very um, excellent in terms of uh, subject ranking. Some of the subject, um, they are listed in the top 50 and uh, top 100 in the world. So this is uh, quite remarkable for the uh, Malaysia University whereby you can get the uh, world-class education at a very affordable price. Okay. And then, um, okay, talking about the uh, affordability because uh, Malaysia now we rank uh, as the uh, second most uh, affordable city for study. This is based on the uh, Q QS study ranking, one of the uh, one of the uh, top uh, one of the uh, top ranking for the uh, study destination okay um, for example if you uh, you can refer to this chart if you compare malaysia with uh, other country for example with uh, usa canada for example so we our the average uh, the average tuition fee at the public university is roughly around 4400 us dollar whereby at the private university average is about 4,900 uh, US dollar. So, okay. Talking about the living cost, Malaysia is uh, one of the most uh, affordable, okay, to study. 
So uh, this uh, based on the uh, Mac Mill price average. For example, in Malaysia, you can have it by about 3.65 US dollar only compared to other countries. And if you talk about the rental, for example, um, this one is the uh, average price about the uh, 100 square meter apartment in the capital city. So roughly it's about 1,026. 1, 20, 1, okay, uh, this one in uh, US dollar for the rental. Okay, uh, yeah, this is uh, some of the example. For example, uh, one liter of milk in Malaysia, you can buy within 1.6 US dollar only. Okay, which is uh, quite affordable, the living cost in Malaysia. Okay, um, this is what the study pathway. Okay, um, the second one is about uh, learn, learn English because uh, based on this uh, ranking, this is uh, based on the 2018 ranking because uh, Malaysia ranked as the uh, seven, uh, seven in the world, okay, in terms of the uh, English proficiency. So uh, for the students, you no need to worry when you come to Malaysia. Most of us can speak and also can uh, understand English well. So you don't have uh, any issues, let's say, if you want to go for the public transportation, shopping, for example, you know. And then uh, most of the program, I think all of the program in our university, regardless uh, public and private, mostly taught in English. Okay, so this can help the student to understand the program and also uh, to live easily in Malaysia. So besides, we do have, we are very uh, modern and progressive country. For example, uh, we do, in Malaysia, we do have uh, a lot of uh, multinational companies invested in Malaysia. This is um, uh, listed here, uh, our local company, for example, Maybank Petronas is one of the biggest uh, oil and gas industry. And we do have uh, Air Asia also, okay, one of the best, uh, uh, one of the best uh, airlines in the world. Okay, for the low cost airline. So if you can see the picture here, you can see the uh, skyline of our city center, Kuala Lumpur. So basically, Malaysia, we have uh, blessed with uh, a lot of uh, sky, skyscrapers. For example, this is our famous uh, Twin Tower. So this has uh, shown the uh, development and also modern metropolis that we have here in Malaysia. Okay, we do have uh, international students after they graduated from Malaysia University. So uh, they work with all these uh, multinational companies that uh, have their office here in Malaysia. So besides that, uh, Malaysia also uh, multicultural society. So basically, uh, we have also students from uh, different races and different countries. For example, in Malaysia, we have experience to host more than 20 years, okay, we have experienced more than 20 years in terms of uh, hosting international students. So in Malaysia, we do have about 100 students from more than 150 different countries. So um, this is uh, good for the students. They can expose to different culture, different uh, practices, different kind of experience and everything. So when they uh, mix up or they uh, make friends with uh, all these students from different, different countries, so it will prepare the students to go internationally, usually after you work, okay? Because you already have all this kind of uh, experience. Okay, and then we do have uh, dynamic life lifestyle, okay? Malaysia offer the dynamic lifestyle for the students. Because here in Malaysia, we do have uh, a lot of uh, places of interest. So usually, um, most, most of our international students during the semester break or during their weekend, so they spend um, a lot of times, you know, just to go and have relax at this uh, some of the attraction place. For example, we do have uh, some of the great islands in the world. Some of the students, they went uh, for a holiday at uh, these very beautiful uh, islands. Some of them went to, to hiking and then some of them, you know, uh, they went to this uh, theme park, for example. We do have Sunway Lagoon, we do have uh, Genting Highland. So we do have uh, a lot of uh, places of interest in Malaysia for the students to relax after they study. So this is uh, the picture of uh, some of the attraction in Malaysia. Langkawi is best for the 
UNESCO, dia UNESCO Geo Forest Park. Perhentian kecil island, for example, is one of the best uh, diving spot in the world. And we do have national park and also some of the uh, heritage places. And besides, um, Malaysia also located at a very strategic location to some of the uh, attraction in Southeast Asia. For example, if you study Malaysia, so you want to spend time in Bali, for example, one of the one of the top tourist destinations. So it's just about takes about three hours. If you want to go to uh, Hanoi, Vietnam, or you want to go to Krabi or Phuket, for example, you just take about one or two hours flight, and then the ticket flight is quite affordable, maybe roughly about uh, 100 US dollar, okay, for the return trip. And besides, uh, the country also blessed as the uh, third most uh, peaceful country in Asia. If you see this uh, ranking index in terms of uh, safest country in the world, Okay, we are ranked at the uh, number 15 in the world. And also in Asia Pacific, we rank at number five. So we are, we are quite a peaceful and uh, prosperous country. Besides uh, Malaysia also, we are free from all those uh, natural disaster, earthquake, uh, volcano, for example. So it's quite safe, uh, you know, to study in this uh, country, okay. So um, that's all a short presentation about uh, study in Malaysia. So next, um, I'll end my presentation with a video, okay, about study in Malaysia. This video is based on experience from uh, international student from Uzbekistan and also from Turkmenistan, how they enjoy their life in Malaysia while studying here. to be here in Malaysia and I really like my university because university presents me so many opportunities to become fluent, natural uh, when it comes to English language as well. I'm trying to travel in Malaysia because Malaysia is a very beautiful country with beautiful nature and I want to see as much as possible here. <laughs> sea or ocean before I had so many feelings inside myself this beauty turned my world upside down I was about to cry I really uh, didn't want to believe that this happening in reality and that's why I'm happy Я определенно хотел бы чтобы каждый кто живёт в моей стране обязательно побывал там где сейчас я нахожусь потому что Это такое необыкновенное, такое прекрасное место, где каждый человек может найти всё, что он хочет. Особенно, если ты действительно хочешь получить прекрасное образование, это один из самых, самых лучших вариантов. Okay, uh, that's all about it. So, uh, next, uh, without further ado, I will give the floor to help university to explain more about their university, the programs, and also uh, the courses that they have. Okay, so over to you. Uh, thank, you thank you, Raja. Okay, uh, I will actually uh, share with you on uh, overall all our programs. It will take only about uh, two to three minutes. And then after that, I'll pass it over to Dr. Lim as well as Naini for the uh, presentation for the American degree uh, program. All right. All right. So in terms of the uh, help university, we are located in uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Okay. And uh, over here, we have programs uh, from the A levels, okay, to early childhood education, management, economics, okay, English program, accounting and finance. And most of the Uzbekistan students that we have uh, over in Malaysia are, are studying uh, accounting and finance, okay, hospitality management, information technology, 
as well as the American degree uh, transfer program. So uh, basically, these are some of the program if you actually look through, all right, we do have the uh, business and management program. Okay, we have the information technology. We have the hospitality and tourism, which is very popular in Uzbekistan and uh, communication. Plus, we do have the American degree transfer program altogether. So without further ado, I will actually pass on to Dr. Lim and uh, Naini for their presentation. Okay, well, thank you for having me. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Kit. No need doctor. I am the head of department for the Department of American and Canadian Education. And the program that we run is um, the American Degree Transfer Program. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, You can see, right? Mm, yes. Okay. So, uh, so we are the American Degree Transfer Program. Our department name is American and Canadian Education. The program is American Degree Transfer Program, or ADTP for short. So, uh, what we are really is our department deals with uh, transferring. So, students who come to help will basically spend about a year to about two years in our department uh, where they will take what we call general education or credits or classes and then uh, for, for the most part people will spend two years max in help in ATP, and then they will go to two years in the United States or Canada. Uh, United States and Canada's uh, education pro undergraduate program is a four-year program so Usually it's like this. So the first two years, like I said, you come to Malaysia, you come to help, and then the other two years you come, you, you go to the university of your choice uh, in either US or Canada. Uh, the first two years in help, you will spend taking what we call uh, general education classes as well as uh, prerequisite and uh, pre-major courses. And usually in American and Canadian schools or American schools, maybe, you need about 30 credits to transfer, which is equivalent to one year of study in uh, ACE and ADTP. Uh, entry requirement basically is uh, if you're doing IGCSE O levels, it's five credits. Uh, for Uzbekistan uh, in particular, you need a diploma in professional college or the academic lyceum, which is equivalent to year 12 of uh, education, which is the minimum requirement for entrance in uh, uh, ADTP and help. Uh, now, if you are doing A-levels, you can also come over. If you're halfway, you know, maybe you decide you don't want to do, you can come over to uh, ADTP as well and you get like some exemptions in, um, in our program. Uh, course fee is about 20,000 ringgit Malaysia a year, which is about 5,000 USD and it's about, uh, 30 credits basically, right? One year is about 30 credits, 10 courses. Uh, one class in ADTP is about three credits, give or take, okay, or four, okay. So uh, depending, like I said, if you, if you look here, you can see, right, uh, you can either spend one year or three years over there, one and a half or two and a half over there or two plus two over there. So depending on uh, how you want to do it. Uh, Generally, in a nutshell, ADTP is a pretty flexible program. Uh, and the pathway usually is like this. If you look properly, uh, after your high school, your year 12, you will come to the first year. Or in, in American education system, it's called a freshman year. You will do the first two years here, and then you will transfer to uh, American or Canadian universities. Or another option is that perhaps you don't want to go to uh, the U.S. Maybe halfway through you decide, yeah, I you know, I don't want to. I love Malaysia, so I want to stay in Malaysia. Uh, it's no problem too because after uh, the second year, as long as you accumulated sixty-seven credit hours, 
you can also go to HELP's local degree programs, which Ben has already shared with you. Okay, and two years there, so it's two plus two, so it's four. Okay. Uh, please, uh, you know, feel free to ask any questions anytime if you are unsure. So I will just continue. So, so what are the classes that you really study uh, at ADTP? So ADTP really is geared towards what we call the American education system or the liberal arts, liberal education. So what it means is that the first year of your study in the US uh, in help is what we call general education. Uh, the US system basically wants you to explore, to, to uh, take a variety of classes in a way to, to foster you to be critical thinkers. So you may want to be an engineer, uh, but you know, uh, the, under the American system, they want you to not just study engineering classes, they want you to also study like things like in the humanities or in the social behavioral sciences or even visual and performing arts. And these are the classes that you would generally take in your first year of study at uh, ADTP at HELP. And the second year, that's where you basically branch off to a little bit more of a specialized pre-major courses. So maybe if you want to do like, let's say you're interested in biology. So in the second year, you will start to take a little bit more math and science heavy classes. So if you're like me, I am a humanities guy, uh, you know, you would take more humanities type classes. So classes like history, uh, religions and sociology and music are all part of the curriculum. Okay. So the, the idea is that they want you to foster, the American education system uh, wants to foster a kind of holistic learning. You want, you want, you, they, they want you to know everything in a sense, to, to basically like uh, pick your brain, so to speak. Okay. So here are some of the popular majors uh, at uh, our program. And it ranges, as you can see, uh, very, very, a lot of variety. It can go from actuarial science to journalism, to computer science, to business, to psychology, political science, anthropology, international relations, really, um, the world kind of is your oyster because uh, there's a lot of majors for you to explore. Uh, if you permit me, I can share a little bit of my, 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 my story. I too am a ADPP uh, student when I was young. Uh, and I started off wanting to be uh, a, a, a journalist actually. So when I transferred to US, I take some classes and I realized, you know, I really like history. And so then I, I majored in history and journalism. So it's, it, it's sort of that flexibility that it's kind of cool about uh, American education. Okay, so there are many more, you know. Okay, so see, here, some, see, here are some of the sample study plans when you do come to uh, ADTP. So let's say you want to be a business or natural science major. As you can see, right, the first year here, these are basically uh, uh, what we call general education studies. You see, you have to take your English, which is college writing, your mathematics, you take one or two courses, your science, you take two, humanities, you take two to three, social sciences, you take two to three. And as you can see, there are all kinds of classes which ranges from Spanish, it's a language class, right, to Western civilization, uh, sociology, public speaking. Uh, public speaking is the art of learning how to talk properly in a, in a general setting. Uh, and then you have your, um, uh, requirement uh, required classes, uh, which is mandated by the Malaysian government, which is right here. And then, as you can see, uh, the business related courses are, of course, a little bit more deeper, which is accounting, macro, and microeconomics. So, usually, when you come through here, it's about like 60 plus credits already, which is equivalent to about two years. That's when then you transfer to uh, the University of Detroit. Uh, there are the other plans here you can see. So, depending on what you take, depending on what major you want, uh, you, would, you would choose the major that is more, the classes that's more related to your major. Although you really don't have to declare your major, you can be undecided. But uh, first year usually is that, you know, it's sort of like the same thing. So you really don't have to decide on a major in your first year, but the second year you could, right? I was sort of messing around when I was doing an ADP, ADTP, you know, do I want to be an engineer, do I want to be this? And finally, I realized I like to do journalism, which then turns out to be I want to be a historian. So <laughs> go figure. 
Okay, so uh, here are more engineering computer science. Um, I mean, just just a glimpse through of the types of classes that we have in class, right? As you can see, there's college writing, uh, there's uh, economics, there's chemistry, there's C++, uh, there's physics, right? there's differential equation and stats. So a, a variety of classes. This, this is what makes, in my opinion, the uh, American uh, degree transfer program very, very flexible and very, very, uh, it, it focuses a lot on the students, what the students choose. And uh, the, the, these are some of the uh, schools that some of our, our students have transferred and, and they do accept all the, uh, they don't accept all the credits for some of them, but for some, for some universities, they do accept all of them. But here are some of the um, sample of US universities and Canadian universities. Uh, this is of course not an, ex uh, this is not a complete list. This is just a sample but I, I just draw on some of the universities that our students have recently transferred to. Uh, We're pretty proud to have a few students that went to Temple University, uh, some that went to University of Minnesota, Twin Cities, which are pretty good, very good schools. Uh, and also some who went to the University of British Columbia in Canada. So uh, the, the, the price range of the US universities can also vary. So it depends on your budget, I suppose you can go from um, 20,000 American dollars a year, which includes tuition and room and board to, I don't know, 50,000 American dollars a year for well, includes room and board. So, so the, the, the choices are vast, uh, just like the, 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 the courses that you take, right? So the, the universities are vast. Uh, you can, uh, in, our, in our department, Ms. Naini, uh, will help assist if you're unclear of certain schools. Um, she is basically the master of all these universities. Um, so um, yeah, so here are just some of the uh, um, schools. So why do you want to uh, go to help it? As I mentioned, you have flexible transfer options to the US, Canada, some have even gone to Australia and New Zealand, uh, and of course the uh, help uh, local degree programs. Uh, and some of the things that I do want to mention is that certain US schools have collaboration with us. So, uh, you know, some, some schools will accept all your credits because they have like collaboration and some they don't, but they do accept uh, help credits, okay? Uh, and like I said, we have excellent university partnerships. In particular, I want to draw to you on these co-op opportunities with certain Canadian universities. Uh, what a co-op means is that you would go to the Canadian school, you would take one semester of class, and then you stop, and then you work, you get experience, you get money, and then you go back to class again, which will prolong your time in Canada, but the, uh, the, the good thing about co-op opportunities is uh, that you gain experience and of course you make some money, right? Uh, uh, in particular, uh, this university, uh, University of Waterloo has that option if you do opt for uh, uh, the co-op program. Uh, there's one here I did not mention, it's called Brock University. They also have uh, co-op uh, co uh, programs. Everything's okay so far because I'm talking a lot. <laughs> uh, so, one more thing about the American uh, Health ADTB program is that it is not so much exam based. In fact, it is a lot more weighted towards assessments. So, in most of our, our classes, you get 60% of assess uh, continuous assessments. So, basically, it's in the form of presentations, short tests and quizzes, uh, uh, assignment papers, group work, things like that and usually only 40% of your final exams. Uh, we can also boast that we have a pretty diverse staff uh, and faculty with different backgrounds, as you can see. Uh, we have faculty from all over the place. We have a Yemeni, we have one, uh, we have uh, lecturers from India, we have an American, uh, Prof Bill teaches uh, uh, 
Prof. Bill teaches um, uh, political science and some business classes. So uh, it's pretty fun. And um, yeah, so, so international faculty is usually good because it sort of like fosters uh, different kinds of thinking. Okay. Uh, of, of course, our, our campus is also quite conveniently located. Uh, as the previous presentation has said, you know, Kuala Lumpur is a major city. Uh, but the good thing about our campus is that it's only five minutes away from the uh, major train station. So uh, students, uh, quite easy, they just take the train and then they'll stop at the station called Samantan and then you just they exit five minutes and you're there already. Uh, our classes tend to be smaller. Uh, our, student, uh, our student size tend to be smaller, maybe about like 15, one to 15. So, you know, smaller, smaller student to faculty ratio means that you get more attention. <coughs> and of course, uh, you, we, we also have a pretty diverse group of uh, students from different nationalities and different groups, <coughs> my apologies, who do um, a lot of programs actually, a lot of uh, activities. So most uh, ADP, ADP students are pretty active, so when you do join us, uh, Please do get involved in a um, some of the things that they do. They plan things like uh, day trips, fundraising activities, even prom. <coughs> Our current president of Student Congress is a Japanese girl, right here. Her name is Yuzuki. <coughs> so, uh, you know, she's pretty friendly. Uh, and most of our students are, are pretty friendly. We we are a it's sort of like a tight knit group of uh, students who like to hang out in between classes. Uh, so here, <coughs> here are some of the, uh, our Lester's alumni who you can see have gone to uh, various schools in the US and in Canada. Uh, Brandon is one of our top students <coughs> who is currently studying in New York University. Uh, Colleen is also a pretty good student. She is now doing his PhD in, uh, What's he doing here? He's biomedical. Uh, so um, a variety of choices, a variety of, uh, of, of uh, schools for you to choose, including Canada and the US, sometimes even Australia. Uh, so I think, I think this sort of makes uh, ADPP a very, very interesting and very, very appealing uh, choice for you to, to come. Um, so uh, that's it for my presentation for now. Do follow us at uh, Instagram, Help Ace Official, or Facebook, or if you have any questions, you can always email us at ace.marketing at help.edu.my. So thank you for your time. If uh, you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you for the good information. Uh, and I would like to ask about one thing that uh, you said the minimum year of studying in Malaysia is one year. And after finishing the course here, uh, there is a opportunity to transfer to USA, also Canada or other countries. So I would like to ask about the visa process. If the student transfers to USA, like uh, the, the student won't have any problems with the visa. Lenny, you want to take that? Yeah, because you know, this, uh, this process is very difficult in our country to get the visa for USA. So that's why it's very interesting to know for all of us. Uh, okay, hi, uh, hi. Okay, the application of visa or study in, in US, basically it's, it, it, you know, it's sometimes it's out of our, we cannot promise in, in such a way because at the end of the day, students can uh, apply. Uh, they can, you know, when they do the get the, uh, you know, the acceptance letter and uh, I twenty, what they call it, that's the most important uh, do document to apply for a student visa. So everything is done online. So and then when they like um, book an appointment and then they will talk to the student. But then there are some cases where uh, st students, if they're from India or from China. Uh, they will ask the student to actually go back to the home country because they, sometimes the document that they submit uh, for the uh, visa application, they find that you know they just uh, they're not sure whether it's genuine or not. 
So some of them, there are cases where they ask a the student to go back to the home country and apply. Uh, we had uh, one of our students that Kit showed earlier, uh, who's actually from Chad. Kit, can you go back to uh, the, the one for our students? Okay, if you Ma. see this uh, Omar Ahmad, yeah, Omar Ahmad is actually from Chad. He had difficulty in getting a visa because uh, in, in Chad, they don't have uh, uh, US high, uh, you know, the high commission, what they call it, US embassy. So he, he applied to a neighboring country and then, but his visa was like, because they're not sure of the documentation. So they say that, okay, um, you go back to your place where you study. So he applied in Malaysia and he got accepted. So again, it is all, initially he was asked to go back. But then when he went back to the, uh, to the you know, apply to a neighboring country, uh, they were still not sure how to say, why don't you go back and apply uh, where you study from. So and he got accepted. So I think it's all based on how the... Uh, the U.S. Embassy, whether how difficult, whether the documents that the student gave is sufficient or not. In general, though, if you're a student uh, and you've never been to the United States, the application process is pretty straightforward. And, uh, you know, students, they are a little bit uh, nicer, so to speak, <laughs> um, because you're a student, right? Um, and so as long as you, you know, have the proper paperwork, it's should be fine. It's just, you know, you need, you need to prepare paperwork, that's all. The, especially the paperwork and then because all students are subjected to, uh, you know, interview. Uh, have the interview, that means face-to-face. -face. So they will ask questions, you know, based on like simple questions like, you know, who is supporting you? Why do you want to study in the U.S.? Because sometimes based on your, your body language, sometimes they find that, oh, this student is hiding something. So they will like become more wary and then it makes it more difficult. Uh, if you are very straightforward that you're going to go there to study and you, know, you plan to come back after you graduate, that'll be the, you know, it'll be safer for students. I mean, they'll be much more, okay, they know that the student is not going to stay in the US and, and not come back. I think that's the most important thing. But I don't think it'd be much, uh, you know, uh, for Uzbekistan student, as compared to you know the seven nations, the seven countries that they are they are banning. Uh, but then we have successful story for students who are actually from Yemen, student from uh, Syria who has gone to Canada. US is still very strict, but Canada can be quite flexible. When I went to interview, just just to add, when I went to interview for my US visa for student, they asked me two questions. Uh, <clears throat> why you go to the US? Who's paying for your school? Actually, they asked, what is your major? That's it. Okay, thank you for good information. And that you said the second question was who is paying for your education? So, yes. uh, when the student is transferring from Malaysia to USA, uh, the, the contract is uh, changes, right? Yeah. What? <clears throat> the contract also changes, I mean, the price for the university. Yeah. Yes, you, yes, yes. You have to pay to the, the U.S. school now when you go there. Uh-huh. Because we uh, received some uh, questions from the students from Uzbekistan that they would like to know the answers. Uh, the, also, there is one question that if the student finishes the university in USA and wants to stay there, like any opportunities to stay after the finishing the university? Yes. Okay. Uh, we call that <clears throat> optional practical training. You get to stay uh, one year, or if you are doing, which is uh, science, technology, engineering, and maths, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so if you do like science, technology, engineering, and maths, you can stay longer mm -hmm. to, to, to get a job. Uh -huh. But uh, the student can get a job after finishing the university, right? Yes, yes. You have to you have to start the application process basically about one semester before you graduate. So let's say I'm I I'm, I plan to graduate in May, right? So I have to apply for this OPT by like January, because it takes like one hundred days to process. So after you get that OPT, then you can apply for jobs in uh, the US. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, one more question from a student. Uh, it's not possible to work in Malaysia while you are a student. 
But if the student transfers to USA, the student will have such a chance to work in USA uh, while being a student. Yes, you can. Uh, the rule is that if you are a student in the US, you can work as a part-timer. So you cannot exceed 20 hours a week. Only in the on campus. semester, you can exceed. Sorry, what? This only has to be on campus work. Uh, yeah, and only on campus work. So, you know, uh, when I was there, some of my friends work in the cafeteria. Uh, I work in like uh, one in the international office, actually. So I was just filing uh, for 20 hours. I was filing applications. So yeah, for 20 hours, you can work on campus and uh, 40 hours uh, during the summer semester. Uh, and within, if in a year, you realize that you don't have money, you can apply for what we call the hardship, uh, what do you call that, Manny? The financial hardship uh, permit. Yep. So basically, was that? Yeah, yeah, correct. So basically what you're telling the US government is that, hey, I come to the US, uh, I have money to pay, but then something happened, uh, I need to pay for my school fees, can I work off campus? So you can, you can ask permission. And they say yes, then you can work off campus. So, and also, as I uh, understood that not only USA, but also the, there is a Canada and other countries too, to transfer. Yes. But if uh, the student wants sorry. to stay in Malaysia and to finish the old university years in Malaysia. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, uh, if the student want, doesn't want to transfer to another country and wants to finish all the years uh, in Malaysia at the Health University. Yes, you can. Uh, right now, uh, so you basically you stay, you stay two years at ADTP. You accumulate 67 credits minimum, which is about two years. And then you transfer to the local health degree. So right now you can go to IT, psychology, business and communication. Mm -hmm. We've got more pathways now. And what about the IELTS requ requirement for the enrollment for this university? The, the band score, I mean. <coughs> ben? Yeah, if you are looking at the uh, entry requirement for uh, English, uh, we would require you to have a 5.5 IELTS, or you can come to Malaysia and do the English preparatory course. This is uh, offered to uh, all our students. So it's also uh, possible if the student doesn't have IELTS certificate, but to study uh, at a health university. Yes, correct. Most of my, my Uzbek students, when they came, they have uh, zero English okay. or maybe level two or level three. So when I speak to them, then they just shake their head. Nyet, nyet. <laughs> <laughs> so after after a few years, uh, I mean after a few months and all, they will be able to con converse in English. Yeah, uh, but because in, no one speaks Uzbek to you in uh, Malaysia. Yeah, but uh, I mean they won't have any difficulties without knowing English language in Malaysia for the starting. I mean, yeah, so far no problem. We have actually a very good. Uh, student service we will actually pick them up from the airport all the way to the accommodation area and all and um, based on my experience with all, all our uh, Uzbek students I mean they they actually have uh, friends and all those things in Kuala Lumpur so some of them even uh, come and actually pick them up and all so um, lifestyle and uh, languages is not a problem but uh, they do have to um, check and also to learn the English so that they can actually move on from there. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what about the credits that the students should collect? And uh, I think it depends on the credits, right? To transfer to another country, for example, to USA or Canada. Like uh, how many credits students should have to transfer at least? Minimum 30. 30, right? Minimum, yeah. Minimum. But if the student has, for example, like more credits, like any more possibilities? See, we recommend maximum 60, about 20 courses. Maximum 60? Yeah. 
Okay, but uh, can I just add on? If uh, it again varies according to the major. If a student wants to do psychology or they want to do something business related, uh, and uh, let's say they, they can do maximum to 60 credit. But for engineering, for sciences, it depends because uh, the thing is that if they want to go to school in the US where it's uh, a higher ranking school, uh, for let's say for engineering, they are, or even for Canada, they are more strict uh, in accepting credits. Let's say if they want to go to, like Dr. Kit has mentioned, uh, Kit has mentioned earlier, you know, students who are going to US, they can do the general education courses, like the humanities and social science. But if they want to go to Canada, then uh, you know they, it's more the the structure is more uh, on the, the the course pathway is more stringent. So we don't uh, students don't have to do a lot of general ed requirement. They can they focus more on the on the major requirements. So normally they do about like forty five credits, which is about fifteen courses. Mm -hmm. And also about the programs that you uh, show with really a lot of programs. Really, they are very interesting. But uh, if the student uh, will have like uh, difficulties with the program that uh, the student has chosen, so then uh, the student will have any possibilities to change the program to another one because that was, for example, difficult. So within ADTP, yes. So the majors, right? Let's say I enter ADTP, I want to do engineering. Maybe after one semester, it's very, very tough. You can change the majors <coughs> without, uh, without uh, going U-turn, right? The credits will still transfer if you pass. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. So halfway through, oh, I don't want to do engineering. I want to do business. That's totally fine. Mm -hmm. That happened to me. My first semester, I want to do engineering. I cannot do it. <laughs> so I wanted, So I did uh, journalism. Okay. Uh, and also, I, yes. wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to compare about, you know, uh, credits with the exams. For example, I study in Italy. And in Italy, we have uh, a lot of opportunity we don't pass once the exam, uh, we can pass and again and again, for example, like three, four times. Uh, uh, is it also possible at the uh, health university if the student doesn't pass the first exam and wants to take again, and uh, if they're in a first, finishing in a first year, they couldn't get, for example, certain credits? What happens in this uh, situation? Uh, well, uh, yes, you, if you fail, you can take again. Uh, and then if you pass, then the, 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 the GPA will average out. Is that correct, Nani? Uh, for U.S. schools, yes, they will average. Let's say you have a, an F and then you repeat a course and you get an A, it averages to about a C. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can take it again. No issue. Yeah, you can do it again. Yeah. Or there are even some instances, maybe you take that class, you really hate it and you fail it, you don't want to take that class again, that's also fine. <laughs> you can take other, other classes. Yep. It's just that the F will stay in your transcript, that's all. At least it's, uh, we, the students should get 30 credits, right? At, at least if the student even doesn't want to pass one, one more exam. Yes, you should get 30 credits, yes. Okay. You must at least pass at least a minimum of C. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. At least a two plus zero. Okay. So also there is very like big question, like a lot of students are very like super interested in this question. Oh, okay, about, thank uh, you. Grants and the scholarship, like any opportunities to get a scholarship at Help University in Malaysia. So right now we have a special bursary uh, where if you come in your first year, we will deduct 2,000 ringgit, which is about 500 USD, right? 500 USD, yeah. yeah. In the second year as well. And then if you do well within the, while, while you're a student, if you do well, you get what we call merit scholarships. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you score like 3.5, 3.6 GPA, then you can apply for merit scholarship. And then it's, uh, and then it's, it's by committee, then they'll decide where, how much to award you on your scholarship so okay can I, can I just add on uh, for there's a lot of uh, US universities that give scholarship to students uh, there's also like some partner schools that we are like uh, very close with so the minute that they get accepted they will get the resident tuition so which means that they pay the same amount of tuition as an American student 
So it'll be like, uh, let's say for example, uh, one of the school, actually from my former school is called Southern Illinois. Without scholarship, it's about 40,000. That includes tuition, room and board, food. But if you transfer to that school, then you get resident, which is a deduction of about 13,000 US dollars for you. So it becomes 27, so which is very affordable. Mm. So, and also uh, the programs, you uh, showed the last programs, and uh, um, how about like, uh, can you tell the, from the students' uh, point of view, the most difficult program at Half University and the most like, let's say, easiest program for studying at Half University? I think it's very interesting to know for students during the- like, uh, Are you referring to the university as a whole or my department? Which one? So like, uh, again, please, I didn't catch. Uh, uh, are you asking about HELP University in general, all the programs, or just my department, the majors? I mean the HELP University, like all programs. This is like students are choosing. For example, in my university, the, the most uh, easiest one, let's say business management, and everybody is getting to the business management. <laughs> <laughs> ben, you all wanna right. answer that? Yeah, definitely. I will uh, have to answer this. Now, in terms of the um, education, I mean, um, help university, I mean, basic, basically, uh, there's no easy or hard uh, subject. But the main thing is that whether you have the interest or the uh, 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 to actually pursue. But most of the um, students that we have, especially from Uzbekistan, the hardest uh, program in a sense that I, I would say is not uh, information technology, is not about uh, uh, what, we, what we call mathematics or whatever. The main thing is that they, the, the hardest one is actually English because most of the students have problem with English and they can't understand the English. That's why they keep on failing. I have a Kazakhstan student previously uh, she actually failed the whole semester during the foundation. But in, in return, I mean, after she failed the first semester, then she really uh, bucked up the whole uh, thing. And at the end, she completed the foundation and she went over to do her uh, Bachelor of Jurisprudence in UK. And she got a full scholarship for the final year to in UK. So bas basically what we are looking at over here is English, if you can master, most of the students who can actually uh, survive in Malaysia, I mean, they do understand uh, uh, English. And that's the hard hardest program, I would say. <laughs> it's not about uh, majors or whatever. <laughs> okay, thank you. So uh, I think for uh, the old students, the information was like very good because all the students I think got the uh, answer for their questions uh, so and I also got interested in this university really it's like very good opportunity to have this uh, also education in uh, another country for example you say or in Canada so uh, that's why um, I think there is no more question from the Uzbekistan people like from Uzbekistan students uh, thank you for having uh, the webinar with us, sharing the, all the information. And we also would like to thank the Malaysia Education for uh, giving us the, all the information. You, you want the, thank the, you for having us. Testimonial video from one of your students, Ben? Uh, yeah, if you can uh, play it, that will be good, yes. I can help you to play one. Thank you. Yeah. So this is the student from Uzbekistan, right? Mr. Umar. Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. Hi, my name is Omar Adhramov. I'm from Uzbekistan. I'm in Malaysia almost for four years. I'm an alumnus of Halib University, currently working in the South Systems. Uh, as regards hobbies, I like to watch MMA, do wrestling, and I'm interested in politics as well. I work in the South Systems as application consultant, so we deliver systems based on our clients' criteria. I like it very much, so I completed the course like six months ago. So 
when I started, when I joined it, I was on level zero in IT field. So in three years of studying there, I gained vast knowledge in this sphere, and I was accepted in one of the leading software companies of Vivo. So that means that they teach very well, and they have great facilities, learning facilities, and they have uh, very highly qualified lecturers who are always ready to help you. Thank you. Uh, one minute video, right? Yes, yes. Uh, very Actually, for Uzbekistan people, you know, and the, the same nationality studies in the, such a good university and shares the overall yeah, yeah. experience. I think it's very good for everyone. Yeah. 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 Okay. So again, okay. thank you for having the webinar with us. Uh, hopefully, we will meet again and we will share like a lot of students to study at Help University. I hope a lot of people interested today. Yes, thank you for having us. Thank you. Yep. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, Ibrahim. Thank you, Raja. Yeah, thanks, Naini and uh, Kate. Yeah, for yep. your time. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Krasidanya. <laughs>